Hello, my name is Isaac and I'm excited to guide you through the process of developing a simple countdown timer application using HTML, CSS and JavaScript in this tutorial. To begin with, we'll navigate to our command prompt. In the command prompt, we'll create a new directory called a countdown. We'll seed into our directory and we'll access our VS Code from here. In our VS Code, we can close the Welcome tab and create three files, which are the HTML file, the CSS file, and the JavaScript file. The HTML file contains the structure of the page, including the timer display and buttons. The CSS file will provide the basic styling for the elements. The JavaScript file will handle the timer logic, including starting, stopping, resetting, and updating the timer display. So our HTML file will have an extension .html. We create our CSS file and name it styles.css and, and our script file with an extension .js. Next, in our index.html file, we use the boilerplate which refers to standard pre written code structure that serves as a starting point for building web pages. We can only change the title to countdown timer. We need to reference our styles and our scripts so we can reference our styles by using the link tag in the head section setting the relation to style sheet and the hypertext reference will be a path to our styles and we can put the script in our body tag with the source attributes to script Js. Next, we start with a div with a class container which will act as a wrapper. And inside our div, we we'll have a heading tag, so arh1 with text value countdown timer. And after our heading tag, we we'll have another div with an id timer. And this div will have value, which will be used for displaying the timer value. We also have three buttons, which will be used for starting the time, stopping the time, and also resetting the time. So we'll start with our button tags with attribute on click. And we'll call three functions. So the first function will be start timer. With text start, we can try and duplicate these codes. So the second would be stop. With a function stop timer, and the third would be reset timer. With the value or the text, with the text reset. We can preview our HTML codes by clicking on the live preview here. Now this is not style, so we need to go to our styles or CSS file and provide a visual appearance for our design. So we can first start by targeting our container class and providing a max width property with value 400 pixels. So we can give it a margin, top and bottom value 0 and left and right margins to auto that we can center our text by using the text align property with the center value then we set our padding to 20 pixels so setting top right bottom and left patterns to 20 pixels then we style our heading tag h1 by giving it a margin of bottom 20 pixels then we start our day with the ID timer by specifying a font size of 36 pixels and get, leaving a margin at the bottom. We can style our button. So the button can give it a pattern.
and given it a margin of 5 pixels. So we are through with our HTML and CSS code. So we now move to our JavaScript codes by going to the script.js. So here we declare our first variable, which is the timer interval. We store the interval ID returned by the set interval method. Then we declare variable seconds, minutes, hours, and initialize them with a the value zero. Minute zero equal to zero. And let's seconds equal to zero. Next, write our function called start timer. We start the timer by setting an interval using the set interval method and calling the update timer function every thousand milliseconds or one second. So timer interval is equal to write our set interval method and we'll call our update timer function every thousand milliseconds or one second. Next is another function called the stop timer, which will stop the timer by clearing the interval. It's our function to stop the timer. So we need to define our function stop timer. So we call our clear interval method and we pass the argument timer interval. Next is a function which stops the timer by clearing the interval. Reset the seconds, minutes, and hours variable to zero and update the timer display to show the reset time. So a function called reset timer. Our clear interval method with our timer interval as argument. We set our seconds to zero, our minutes to zero, and we set our hours to zero. So we have our document dot get element by ID. We call the timer ID setting an index dot HTML text content equals then write another function called format time, which will be written later. Passing arguments, hours, minutes, and seconds. Next is another function which we we'll call update timer, which increment the seconds, minutes, and hours variables to update the timer values. So we define our function update timer, and we are going to increment the seconds. And if the seconds reach 60, they should reset to zero and the minutes incremented. Same way, the minutes reach 60, they should reset to zero and the hours incremented. So finally, the timer display is updated with a formatted time. So we do our documents dot get element by ID. The timer ID we use a text content called the format time function, and we pass an argument hours, minutes, and seconds. So next is another function called a format time, which will accept argument hours, minutes, and seconds, and it will return our time format. And it will return our hours, minutes, and seconds in the format that we want. We can write another function called the part zero function to take in a value, and it parts it with leading zeros, if it is a single digit, using the part start method. So let's write a function called the part start, a function called the part zero hours. So next is a function which pass the string with leading zero to ensure it has a minimum length of two characters. So write our function part zero, and it will take value as parameter and return a string value or to string to parts. So let's go to our index.html and let's open our code with live server. So let's click on start. Great, and it's working. Let's click on stop. Stop the countdown. Let's click on reset. 